Hey, it's Rob, and I'm in the middle of editing this disastrous uh, video doing the K5 U joint. I thought I was going to be all civilized and, and use the proper tool, and we wound up just using a hammer. So, um, watch the video, watch me fight the tool, and then give up and use the hammer. Either way, we get the job done, and in the end, it's probably easier without the tool and just with a hammer. The tool's got its use. We bought it for something on, the, on one of the Jeeps, and whatever it was, I, I forget now what we used the tool for on the Jeep, but it worked out really well, and I thought we were going to use it on the U-joint and do it like you're supposed to do it, easy with the hammer. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Axis Garage. I'm Rob, and it's been quite a few months since we've done a video on the K5. And I, I don't know when, it's a week after Mother's Day, uh, the weather finally broke here in New York, and I don't know when this video is going to get up because we got a backlog of videos that still need to go to editing and, and then get posted, so we have no idea when this video is going to go up. But being that the weather broke, we can finally get some work done on the K5. Our plan for the K5 this nice weather season was to get the heater core fixed so that he's in good shape for the winter to come. Then we could start working on some interior stuff, but um, the big dummy really got excited about maybe getting the truck painted in the spring, so he's got a nice cruiser for the summer. And when we were looking at the bodywork that was required, which wasn't a ton, and the cost of getting it painted, we are leaning towards a wrap right now. So we have two donor doors that are bare, that are in great shape. They're at the body shop getting primed right now. The truck is going to have to get stripped down and go into the shop and get a little bit of body work done around the rear wheel wells. we got some bubbling coming through. Get that addressed, get it in primer. And he's got that 88 to 91 typical GM. The clear coat is separating from the color coat on the hood and on the roof. So that's going to have to get sanded out and primed also before we wrap it and the dog's barking like an idiot. Um, so while we're getting ready to do that, he started driving it when the weather broke, and he's got a little clanging going on, and I'm going to see if I can replicate the clang right here in front of the driveway. Sounds like a U-joint. Uh, we've never done the U-joints on this one, and if those of you that have been following along on this K5 project, every time we have a, a little issue with something, we just replace it. This was starting fresh, 30-something years old, um, unknown, really an unknown history on maintenance other than the replacement motor that was in it, a Jasper motor. So... And I didn't have to order them on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can get the U-joints, the standard duty and the severe duty. I wanted to go with the severe duty, but the, uh, the standard duty, I happen to have two on the shelf in the garage, so we're going with them. So, if I remember correctly, on these uh, these old trucks, I believe it's a 716. It might be metric. It's an 89. You know, it's like that, the mid-80s. GM did half metric, half standard. I'm going to try with a 716 before I climb under. So what I did was I grabbed um, a 716, two different 716 combination open end wrenches, a half inch in case I have to hook on and get a little leverage. I got a 716 socket on a, a little three inch extension, and then I got a big old nasty screwdriver if I have to stick it in there to stop the drive shear from moving around. It's in park. I shouldn't have that problem. We're going to crawl under and drive shaft, for those of you who have never done a drive shaft or taken a drive shaft out, um, in a standard rear wheel drive car or most four wheel drives, it's a slip fit into the back of the transmission or transfer case and on the rear end side there are two straps, uh, four bolts, two for each strap that hold the U-joint into the rear end and you just take those bolts off, you slide it forward just a little bit to get it out of its holder and then you could slide, you could angle it down or up and slide the slip end that goes into the transmission or transfer case if you got a four-wheel drive vehicle and it comes out. Once you get it out, um, you got to do it all out here, not under the car. So it's just pulling it out. You might lose uh, a couple of ounces of transmission fluid when you when you pull it out and if you do, you just top it off as you normally would. But let me grab the keys and I'm going to leave the camera rolling and see if you can hear the, the ding that sounds like it's a U-joint. We're hoping it's not something coming from the rear end will come from the transmission end. I think it's U-joint because it's even making a little bit of noise when you go around a turn. Um, 
So we'll see you now. I got a helicopter. Dogs barking, helicopter, wind like crazy today. Um, I know in previous videos I've been having some trouble with the audio on this camera. I dropped it a couple times, and that's probably why the audio is a little, a little screwed up. I was using the mic whenever I can, but now I can't find one of the, the cords for the mic. So I changed some of the settings on the camera. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad. I'm going to have to get another camera because the, the, the wind is, is killing it here. And it's, you know, as soon as I try to do something, the wind kicks up. So let me start it up, and we'll see if I can replicate that sound. So of course when you want it to make the clang, it doesn't really make the clang as loud. I got it to do it twice. I don't know if it came in on the video. If it did, then you just heard it. When I edit it, I'll, I'll hear it. But um, you could, you, it makes a little clang when you're going from reverse into drive. It usually clangs. And it's a very tinny kind of clang. And it also feels like when, you're, when you go into reverse or into drive, it's sort of you get a, a, a feeling of, of like that play. Like the, so we'll see when we take the U-joint out. So let me get the camera off the tripod. Let me stop yapping because I know you guys say I yap too much. And I do because it's, that's, that's what I do. And that's the nature of the channel. And um, we'll get under there and I'm going to put my gloves on to keep my dainty hands clean. And we'll see. Hopefully it is 716. All right. So under the car here, there's your end going into your uh, rear end. All right. Here's the U-joint right here and here is one of the straps that I was talking about and there's your two bolts and then you got two on the other side we actually stopped in a great position where we can get at all the bolts without having to turn the drive shaft and then following the drive shaft up where it goes into the back of the transfer case you can see there's another U-joint there and that's just slipping in and there's a seal in the back of the transfer case if you got a leaky seal you see I got a little, a little drip there but it really doesn't leak much. If you have a leaky seal, now's the time to change that because you got the drive shaft out anyway, and the seal's probably like two dollars on Amazon um, or even Rock Auto, and and that's it. So um, sometimes when they're really bad, you can stick a a screwdriver in and sort of turn it one direction or the other, and you'll see the slop in the U-joint. Um, Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You really can't uh, tell until you, you get it out. But we're going to pull it out and we'll see how, how sloppy they are. Hopefully this is what it is. Alright, so I'm just going to take a 7 16 I'm going to put it on there. Make sure you're on good and just knock out these bolts. And then I'll continue along from there. i got to put the camera down because I can't hold and talk and, and wrench at the same time. See if I can get some to compensate for the light here. Okay, there we go. All right. So once you get those straps out, um, all you got to do is get this U-joint, and usually just from from grease and crud, they're kind of stuck in there. And that's when I just use a. Oh, what happened? It got dark again. There it goes. It gets light. So usually from grease and crud and stuff, um, they're sort of stuck 
in there and they just pop out real easy with a screwdriver and again let me see if I can get the camera up here while I'm doing it put it on the thing I'm trying to wedge something under the camera now right. so that's not going to work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the screwdriver up behind it and I'm just going to pry forward and it's going to pop off and again I gotta put the camera down because I don't have a cameraman's son uh, today because the big dummy's working and the little big dummy is doing some end of the year school work and I don't want to bother him alright so once you pop it out and then you can slide it a little forward and if I go down to there you can see how right here right you can see the mark on the slip yoke Right, so I pushed it in to give me room to hang the drive shaft down, and I'm spinning you all around, I apologize, I'm trying to get this on camera, and then you just slide it out, right, off the tail, and sometimes you'll get some little drip of fluid out of there, um, just make sure when you bring this end down, you don't mar the end all up, you can see, um, it looks like in years past, it's not really coming up on camera, but it looks like in years past they might have scraped it around a little bit. You want to keep this end off of the pavement because uh, you don't want to booger that all up. All right, now we'll bring it out and we'll bring it into the shop and uh, we'll swap out the joints. So first we'll check the joints and see if we can get any visible um, slop with our hands to diagnose our problem. We're changing them anyway, but hopefully they're the problem and not something more serious. All right, so here in the garage where we can see a little better, Take our dry shift, put it up on the bench, and you see right there? Right? That play in the joint, let me uh let me zoom in. Alright, so you got the joint, these these are held in with the straps, these are you know into the to the rear, and you can see right on this one right here, right, the slop in there, and that, that was making the noise. So we know this one's bad. Um having one of these K5s years ago, like I always talk about, they they beat up your joints pretty bad. And this one's got a got a zerk on it so that you can grease it. Probably hasn't been greased in in a decade or two and you know if you keep them greased um you get longer life out of them i that's why i really wanted to put the heavy duty one the real severe duty one has the zerk fitting on the end of a cap which makes it really easy to get at, and it goes in this way and fills the uh the whole fitting with grease but this one shot so you always replace both of them um because if this one shot the other one might not be far behind if we spin it around right you just wiggle it so I do feel a tiny tiny bit of play when I move it this way back and forth which would mean that this one's on its way out too um, I can't tell whether it's you know the ones going into here or the ones going into here but we're gonna pull these apart and this one's got a zerk on it too and it probably like the other one hasn't been greasing in years now there's two ways of doing these um, one way is just using device to hold it and beating it with a hammer um, and then there's the more civilized way as you get older when you start accumulating um, the proper tools for the job. There is a, uh, a U-joint press that you could use. Um, I really haven't. I bought the press and I think I've only used it once. Um, and we'll see. These have little C-clips on the inside to retain uh, the U-joint so that they don't come out. And we're going to pop those little clips off. They're, uh, they're just a big C-clip right on the inside. You're just going to find the opening, pop those clips off and then we can uh, start working on the U-joint. Alright, so the tool that I'm using is a uh, ball joint service kit. This one, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. They're not very expensive. Um, usually, unless you're doing big trucks and everything, a cheap um, Chinese one, which this one probably is, usually does the job pretty well. So, got to open it up so that it'll go around, and then you got to see if, like this, I don't need, they, they have, 
they have different, all different kinds of um, adapters. I'll show you the kit here. They have all different kinds of adapters that you can use to, uh, you know, for spaces and and whatnot. Um, I don't really think I need one in this situation. I think just putting it over like this because the cap will fit through it. All right, then like that. Um, and then what you do is you. You tighten this end, it pushes the U joint that way just a little bit so that you can access those C clips that are in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this in the vise actually just to make it a little bit easier. And just snug it up in the vise. You don't want to bend your joint or anything like that. And then you're going to take this, put this on. Right on the center of the cap, like that, and then you got a uh, a thingy here, and I'll use a, uh, a wrench on it or something, something easy. So it's a seven eighths, and should be able to find the clips. Now I can get it just about the whole clip and I can find the, the cut in it and all it did was move it over just a hair. Right? And there's the, the C clip. And it just moved it over a hair. It really can't move it over a ton because there's a C clip on this side. So now you loosen it and it just, it was like I said, it was just a hair that it had to move it over. So you loosen it up, you put it on the other side, that's my door blowing open on the jack stand that I'm using as a door chock because the freaking wind is crazy today, right? Now this one, same thing. There might be a way you could lock the tool maybe in the vise instead of having the <coughs> instead of having the drive shift. That might be easier. I don't know. Like I said, I've used it once before. Um, instead of beating it with a hammer. Like I did back in my younger days. So it's the same thing. You're going to go in there with, with, a, with a small pick of screwdriver. And try to turn that, that C-clip until you can get to the opening. And then when you get to the opening, it usually comes out pretty easy. Alright, so I turn the C-clip, now I got the opening, and
coin, which I didn't need to save it because I already showed you the first one. All right, so we got those two C-clips off, and now we should be able to push one side out the bottom. So I wonder if, if I put this in the vise. Let me try that. That's the drive shift in the vise. I guess you could put an impact on this, maybe. Oh yeah, that's much easier on the vise. Oh, yeah, I was a dummy going the other way. So now that cap is through, which means the cap is through on the other side as well. So now we'll loosen it up, pull it out. You see that cap is through on the other side, so you can pull the cap off. There's your needle bearings inside the cap. And can you finagle it out, or you got to go back the other way? Huh? You got to go back the other way. Now you gotta flip it over and you're gonna go on the U joint without the cap. And you're gonna drive that other cap end. Back through the other way. Once you get it started, it actually, it's not too bad. Once it starts moving. through. Oh, I didn't get the cap through all the way. Shit. <sighs> I guess that would have been a good thing to check that I had the cap through all the way, but what are you going to do? I guess once the U-joint body bottoms out on your shaft, that's as far as you can go. Take it out. Take the cap off. Your, uh, your slip yoke, get that cap the rest of the way out, right, there's the cap, right, it's got like a, a grease seal on it, it's got the needle bearings in there, and then it's got a groove right here, which is where that, that C-clip sits to hold it in place so it can't work its way out. So now that that's done, we got a much easier to work with this little thing. All right, so the same thing we're gonna 
hold it nice and centered on there. I'm going to give it a little squeeze so I can get that access to that C-clip there. That seems to be the hardest part actually is finding that C-clip and all the grease and getting to the open part of it. I know there's a lot of guys that that are probably wondering what I mean by you can beat it out. I'll show you on this one how you would beat it out. You take your your vise like this, right? Now you got your your this end of the U-joint right across the vise. And you grab a decent sized lump hammer. Right, and if you hit here, right, see how it's driving up? Right, and bring it on there. Right, now the cap is almost all the way out. You just give it a ball. Now you know the cap is out, all the needle bearings went flying, which is uh, one another drawback to beating it out, but at least you got it out. Um, what I like to do now is just take some brake clean, clean this up, um, make sure that your inside surface here is nice and smooth. If you have any burrs or anything in here, a little emery cloth or something, or uh, one of those little bullet wire wheel uh, things on a drill and just drive it through to make sure you don't have any burrs. The new cap's going nice and straight. Screw your new caps you don't up want in here. Put them in. All right, so you can put this to the side because this is going to get a new U-joint. I'm going to get cleaned up, and now you just have to get the... to get the remaining U-joint out. So, if I move this vise again, this way, tighten it down, all right, you can see this side doesn't have nearly as much grease on it. So, you're going to be able to see that clip in here because it's rusted and it's not covered in grease because this is the shitty one. You can go in there with the screwdriver and try to pry that clip out without pushing it from one side to the other. You should be able to get it out. There it goes. This is cap is the was the biggest culprit. There are no needle bearings left in that cap. Do that. So that's a. This is the bad cap. The needle bearings completely disintegrated, probably because it went dry. And here's a cap that was pretty good, and you could see mm -hmm. the needle bearings in there are still all in in place, and they're covered in grease. And that's why. That's why they're still good because they're covered in grease. This one completely dry. Needle bearings are gone, and that was the reason why you had that slop, because without the needle bearings, it doesn't fit tight on it. When you have one with needle bearings, it goes on, and now it's nice and tight. Alright, so that one, the cap fell right out. Now this one, we're going to get the C-clip off. This back one had so much less grease, I didn't have to push the cap down to find the, the C-clip. I was able to actually see him pretty easily because there's no grease on it. So you get an end. Try to get the screwdriver to get a little purchase on the end of that clip. for you all, and for me, I've decided I am not a big fan 
with that ball joint service tool. It is so much easier to do it this way. I mean, you're really supposed to use the tool because they're not really designed to be beat on like that, but that's me. Same thing with this end. You want to clean up the end. Um, you can hit it with a, a little wire brush, some brake clean to get the grease off, clean it up, make sure there's no burrs on the inside, and then we can start installing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys take a break because I'm going to turn the camera off and clean that stuff up. All right, so I washed down the dry shaft, um, got all the grease off, washed it down with brake cleaner, and then I went over with like Windex. And in true car guy fashion, I hung it outside and I put a quick coat of black enamel on it. Um, because, because I'm a car guy, and that's what car guys do. They go overboard with things like why put a rusty drive shaft back in when you could refinish it and make it look nice and hopefully preserve it for the future. Where this thing doesn't need paint, but I uh, cleaned it up nice, so now I don't even have to wear gloves because it's nice and clean. Um, the U joint is uh, I went with Moog because that's supposed to be the reputable brand, but guess what? Moog is now outsourcing and it's head show in Mexico, and hopefully, the Quality control is good, but uh, you get the U joint in the box. Okay, it's wrapped in a um, in a corrosion paper, corrosion resistant paper, almost like you used to is going used to buy a, a revolver. It was wrapped in a in like a oil impregnated paper like this, um, and then it's got a little bag of parts. It's got uh, four new C clips, and it's got a little uh, Zerk fitting that you have to install onto the U joint itself. So. Turn around and you got your little, you got your hole for your Zerk and you screw your Zerk in and that should be a 3 eighths, um, is it a 3 eighths? Smaller than a 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths, yep, 5 sixteenths on the Zerk and you just got to snug it, doesn't need to be over tight, it's just the grease fitting. Alright, so your Zerk is in. All right, um, you got your, I cleaned my vice up, but I missed a spot, okay? So, now you got your, your slip joint, you want to get it in your slip joint, you want to put the Zerk fitting in a spot where you'd be able to grease it. So, um, this goes into the transmission this way, right? And the drive shaft goes down, so you wouldn't want it where it's pinching. Um, so, up here you could grab it. If it was down here, the dry shift is going that way. So I'm going to put it in this way, so it's pointing out that way, and it's not in a spot where they're, they're both bending in the wrong direction. Actually, you can put it up here. It's bending away. I'm going to put it right up there like that. All right, because then when it's if it's up, you can rotate the dry shift and get your uh, your fitting on there with your grease gun. You got plenty of room. All right. So now remember the cap's going from the outside. So very carefully, you take these caps. You make sure you don't mess up your your needle bearings okay they stay the, the grease that's in there is holding them in and then you're going to slide one end in and one end in and then you're going to slide your cap onto your u-joint and slide it in as far as you can do it by hand then on this side oh I'm, I'm like off camera I apologize So I'm doing this over. I don't know where uh, I don't know where I cut myself off because I wasn't on camera. I didn't realize I had the camera up. Um, so you take your two caps off. You figure out where you want your Zerk um, so that it's easy access when it's in the vehicle. You know you want your Zerk fitting in a spot where the dry shift and the uh, the slip yoke aren't bending in, and then you can't get it in. So you, you figure out where you want your Zerk. Um, you slide it through so it's in. Then you take one cap. And you slide it on so that it's all the way on the U-joint, and then you slide it in as far as you can go. 
Now this one is letting me go all the way to where I can get the C clamp on, which is great. Uh, the C clip. Now this one, you slide that one on, and it's noticeably tighter, which is fine. Um, so we're going to take our C clips and we're going to put it in the groove. Try not to launch them and lose them. That one's in there. So now all we have to do is get this cap in a little bit, right? We know the cap is on good, the, the, the needle bearings aren't in a, in a bad spot, so what we've got to do is just take and just tap a little bit so that we can get that clip on. And now we'll grab another one of the clips and yeah, it's a little, still a little tight to get that clip on, so let's just put it there. And this is not even using that stupid tool. Tap it a little bit more. Let's see if we got enough room to get the clip on. All right, and the clip is in. All right. Give it a tap over there. Give it a tap over there. Make sure they're in. The clips are in good. And it's nice. Just make sure when you're tapping it that you don't tap it so hard that you knock one of these caps off. Because if you knock the cap off and it lands on the ground, all the needle bearings are going to go all over the place and you now just destroy a perfectly good u joint. So now this end is going to go into the drive shaft and I'm waiting for that paint to dry. It shouldn't take more than, than 15-20 minutes to dry so it's a good time to have a cup of coffee, um, clean up the mess that I made and what I will do is take those, I'll take those um, the straps and the two bolts and I'll hit them on the, the Y wheel on the bench. Uh, just to clean them up so that they go in there nice and easy and uh, the threads aren't all rolled up or anything and by the time that's done the dry shaft will be dry just put a quick easy coat of, of black enamel on it it's a windy day today so it's going to dry fast all right so i hit the four bolts and the straps the bench grinder they're nice and clean um i'll put a little uh dab of uh, oil on the threads as i'm putting them in so they don't rust in place that it's a fine thread bolt um but just you know we like to do that right little dab of white grease, little dab of oil on the threads, make it easier for the next guy, because that next guy, you know what I say, it's probably going to be you. So we'll put them to the side, and we'll go get our drive shaft, and we'll put our slip yoke onto the drive shaft, and our other U-joint onto the drive shaft. Alright, so the big dummy's actually here now, home from work, but he's too tired to do anything, but he wants to watch and see how it gets done. So the one thing that I did forget to mention was, and I don't know if it matters, it, this was the front end, this was the back end. Once you have it out, you can't tell. How I remember it was, the, the fat weight, the balancing weight was on the front, and the thin balancing weight was on the back. I don't think it matters. There might be some engineering thing that it does matter, but I'm just going to put it back in the way it came out. So we have our... We have our slip yoke here with the new U-joint installed, and now we got to install it on the front end, which I'm saying is the, the, fat, the fat weight that's welded on, because um, I remembered when I took it apart. So the same thing, you're going to pull the caps off, all right, carefully, so that you don't jack up the needle bearings in there. And then you're going to slot it in, all right, like that, and then you're going to take one cap, you're going to slot it in very carefully so that you don't disturb any of the needle bearings. All right, and then you're going to do the same thing on this side. Now remember, when we put that other one on, they slid through a long way like this one. Look at that one, how nice that one slid through. All right, so that one slid through all the way. So we can take our C-clip and we can pop it in on this side because we've got plenty of room. Now this one didn't slide through all the way, so what we'll do is Get it over here on the on the vise, and we'll just gently tap it in. My vise is a little too loose. I can put it right there like that. Well, tap it in like that. It looks like it's going in straight. C-clip is on all the way, and now we just got to drive it the rest of the way home, so I'm just going to 
tighten my vise up just a little bit. Alright, and now I got enough room over here to get that other C-clip on. And that C-clip is in there, and now what I'll do is just give it a tap. So on either side, make sure those C-clips are seated, and this one's good. There's no play. It's not too stiff, so nothing's binding. All right, we got access to our Zerk fitting right here. So when it's in the vehicle, we can come in right from this angle here and, and get our Zerk fitting. And when it's down low, we're not going to get our Zerk fitting because it's going to be like that. Um, probably would have been better off on this side. But, hey, you live and learn. All right, so then we're going to spin the dry shaft around. Yeah, I'll put a little coat of enamel on it, nothing fancy. I didn't go crazy. Let it dry for 20 minutes or so while I cleaned up uh, my mess. And now i got a nice clean dry shift and it doesn't look rusty. So we're going to get our other U-joint. Alright, again we're using Moog, the problem solver, federal mogul, uh, Hencho and Mexico. Because you can't buy a mother effing thing made in the United States anymore. Moog used to be the go-to U.S. brand. And supposedly their, their quality is still pretty good. Um, I don't know if the severe duty ones, and I'll have a link for both of these, for the standard duty, which these are, and the severe duty, which I would have purchased, if not that I had these on the shelf in the garage already. Um, so now we're going to take that Zerk fitting, alright, we're going to put the Zerk fitting on just like we did with the other one. Alright, so you thread it on, and then you grab a, what size was that? It was... 5 sixteenths. And just snug it down, doesn't have to be super tight. Alright, and the same thing. So this one's going to come in on an angle like this. So putting the zerk on this side. here would make the most sense. So putting the Zerk going out this way. So now two caps are going to stay on whenever we're going to take them off because those are going to get strapped into the rear end and then we got two caps that are going to come off and we are going to install them in. So we're going to take cap off right, like that gently so that you don't mess up the needle bearings and knock them out of place and a cap off that cap up and need that cap off and you're gonna slide it in and slide it in. Alright now once it's in there you're gonna take your cap make sure your needle bearings are all in place and you're gonna slide it in as far as it'll go and that one goes all the way nice. And then this one you're gonna slide it in and that one doesn't want to go anywhere. So sometimes it's just that it's not centered. But that one's not, man, that one doesn't go in anyway. But this one goes in all the way. So we're going to take a C-clip. I'm going to pop the C-clip on that one. All I'm doing now is I'm just moving the edge of the C-clip, rotating it just a little bit, so that that cap will slide back out in the C-clip sits against it. Okay. okay. Now that C-clip is in. we got to get this C-clip in, but the only way we can do that is by and you can hear the difference in the tone when it bottoms out. You know that it's bottomed out, you turn it over, grab your other C-clip, Did not land straight. Where's my little screwdriver? See that? Didn't land in the groove, so you gotta dig it over and get it in the groove, which sucks. Looks like it's gonna be easier to 
pop it back out. Alright, so popped it back off. There we go. Now it's in the groove. So now we can take this side. And that side, so they're both good in the groove. Nice. No binding. Now the only other thing we have to do, we got two C-clips left. And it would appear that you didn't need the C-clips. But you do need the C-clips because when you put it in, let me get one of those straps, onto the rear end, right, these straps go over. And the C-clip actually rides up onto the side of the, the, the strap here. And that's what stops the strap or anything from moving. So you're going to put these two C-clips in also. Right, so you got those two C-clips in, so now when both of your straps are on, it automatically is going to center it because it can't move. It can't work its way out, right? This cap can't because this is bolted to the rear end, so this cap can't work its way out. It's going to stay in nice and snug, all right? Um, you can grease it now. You can grease the front. can grease the front now because both all four are in and being held in place so when you pump the grease through it's not going to push one of the caps off because they're all in place but it's not a good idea to do it now because it just makes a mess and you're going to be handling it and your hands are going to get full of grease when the because when you grease it until the grease starts to come out of the, the grease seals just a little bit then you know it's full of grease the back you can't grease at all until you get it installed because what will happen is as you pump the grease into the grease fitting, which is right here, it's pushing the grease into the caps. It'll push these two caps off, and with all that grease in there, it'll make it very hard to get them back on, and you'll probably screw up your needle bearings, and they'll be all out of place. So you wait till you get it installed, give it a couple shots. They're pre-greased, so you really just need a couple shots with a grease gun to make sure that they're fully packed, and you should have a decent life out of these. Um, like I said, those K5s, they're tough on the reed. This U-joint in particular, they're very tough on, and I've always... You know, had it fail on my other one, that's why I wanted to do the severe duty. So we're just going to go and, and do the same exact thing. We're going to put those two caps in, right? You're going to go on the rear end like this. Like if the rear end was over here, they go on. You put them in, 7 sixteenths. Um, snug them up. They don't have to be super tight. I'm sure there's a tor torque spec for it, but uh, we're going to call the torque spec. What are we going to call it, big dummy? Good and tight. The German torque spec. Good and tight. So we're just going to gonna snug it and then give it a little eh. And, uh, and then we can wrap it up. All right, back out here in the wind, and it's blowing a mile a minute. We got the dry shaft in. We put it in just like we took it out. And, you know, once those 716s bolts, you know, once they seat, just give them, give them a little time and make them good and tight. All right? Big gummies washing, getting all the pollen off, all the shit that accumulated on the, on the soil top. It's probably going to rain tonight anyway. It rained for like 30 days uh, in the last 35 days. It's crazy. But, um... Just to get all the crap off, and now he's happy that he can start driving again. The one thing I neglected to say um, about the, the bolts going in for the rear end, right? A little drop of oil or white grease on the threads to make it easy for the next guy, because the next guy might be you. And while you're out there, when you put that slip yoke back in, remember it's going through a rubber seal. Uh, the horns are going off the fire department. It's windy. Um, anyway, take a dab of transmission fluid or motor oil and just uh, rub it on that on that slip yoke, um, I used a uh, 3-in-1 Earl. Uh, I have these old cans that uh, that were my dad's um, from, I mean, shit, these cans probably been around since I was a little kid. They were old then. Um, but I just put a couple drops on there, you know, wiped it around with my finger, and then slid it through. This way you don't uh, mess up that rubber seal there, and you get a good seal, and you don't have a leak in the um, tail of transmission. You know, he, he washes backwards. Like, like, let's do the roof first. So that all that shit comes down and, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, reach, there you go. Good, good, reach, 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 back and forth. What is with the one-way stroke? Just go back and forth, the halfway through, and then you get the other half on the other side. There you go, go all the way across, there you go. Yeah, look at that. He's learning. All right, that's it today from Axel's Garage. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up. 
Give me some comments about that U joint. If you're a mechanic and you want to break my chops, by all means break them. If you got a better way to do it, by all means let me know. And if that tool that we did, didn't wind up really using is better to use it and there's a better way to use it, let me know in the comments. I do read every comment. I know people break my chops about doing things certain ways. I'm not a professionally trained mechanic. I learned just doing it myself, by myself, uh, little by little. Each time it got a little bit better, got a little bit easier just by trying it yourself and trying to figure out a way to get it done. Um, yeah, sometimes I wind up breaking something and doing it wrong, but I do read the comments. So if you got a better way to do it, let me know. If you like the way I did it, let me know. It doesn't take that long. You know, it took me a lot longer because I was videoing it. All in all, it should have been about a, a half hour in and out, and I painted the shaft, of course, because car guy thing. Mechanics won't paint the shaft. Car guy, you got to paint the shaft to make it look nice when you put it back in. We're also trying to preserve a 30-something-year-old truck. That's it from Axles Garage. Please, if you like what we're doing here at Axles, all the sh crap that we're doing, I got my father-in-law nosing around, and then he hears me talking on the camera, so he's leaving. And um, anyway, if you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button so that you always see when we got a new video.